So you want to know how to price point your Fantasy Formula 1 team? Well, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the pit wall, your stop for Fantasy Formula 1 content. You can like and subscribe to be up to date with more videos like this. I'm Jack, and let's go. First thing you have to take in consideration is the two aspects of team makeup. First, you have to have six slots, five drivers, and one constructor, and two, you have to fall under a salary cap. When you start the season or when you make a new team, it'll always be a hundred million. As the season progresses, you can increase your value and the salary cap of your team. Here I have team one and team two, which share three drivers, Verstappen, Leclerc, and Norris. If you look here at the value of the team, you'll see that both are actually at 100.5 million. The difference though is in the remaining budget. Team one has 101.6 million in its value, whereas team two has 102.1. And that is because of the improvement of team two over the course of the season in its value. When you're comparing teams or wanting to set up your team, you want to consider that with six slots dividing into 100, that is an average of about 16%. The nice thing is most of these drivers costs can turn into percent. So for Stappen costs 25.3 million, that's the equivalent of saying that he takes around 25% of your team's makeup. That's a quarter. You have six slots. So you have to balance. How should my driver or constructor cost above that 16% or below that 16% average? And see if the points can be worth it. Which brings us to a Reddit post that I responded to early today that I want to share with you. The simple question was, should you swap out Verstappen and Leclerc for Gasly and Hamilton? Now in the response, I gave a detailed analysis to show that Verstappen and Leclerc is greater than Hamilton and Gasly. I took three points. What was their points per million? What was their cost value? And then what was their average points? And when you added those together, you could see that Verstappen and Leclerc were greater than Hamilton and Gasly in all three categories. But what I want to do is share with you the tools that I use so that you can make your own data analysis and your own conclusions. So welcome to the Google Spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet I've been making from the ground up, and I'm gonna walk you through the things that I did to compare these drivers so that you can do it on your own. Under the rank tab, you have different categories. Hamilton is better than Verstappen in score, but Leclerc is greater than Gasly in score. So you can quickly start comparing who is above whom. Then you go to the cost. Hamilton costs more than Verstappen, but Leclerc costs more than Gasly. Everything in yellow are when drivers are with in 0.2 million of each other. For example, Vettel and Alonso, you might be wanting to know which of those two drivers is a better choice. Well, then you could start comparing them to these other categories. What is their value? Points per million. Verstappen has a 1.5, which is greater than Hamilton, which is a 1.3. And Leclerc is even greater than Hamilton and Gasly, which is at a 0.8. Then you look at the value. What is their price differential? Verstappen is at a 4.8%. That's the second highest value. That means you are getting many more points than you are having to pay for at this time. He outranks Hamilton, and then Leclerc, of course, outranks Gasly by considerable margin. Then you can go over to the control. Who has more fastest laps? Hamilton has more fastest laps. You get five points for your driver every time they get a fastest lap in a race. And then position. Hamilton often gets an average position of one. So that's gonna be 10 points in qualifying and 25 points during the race. For Stappen, he's got two as his average position. That's nine points in qualifying qualifying and that's a average of 18 points during the race. Leclerc, he averages fifth position. Gasly averages eighth. So you can start seeing where these drivers lie in comparison to each other. Hamilton, he doesn't usually lose or gain positions. Verstappen usually gains one position on average. That's going to give him bonus points. Leclerc doesn't usually change in positions, but Gasly's the kicker. He loses five positions. That can be upwards of negative 10 points every single race. Lastly, you look at the teammate battle. Gasly, beats his teammate 83% of the time and right now he averages to beat Sonoda in both qualifying and in the race. So he would give you bonus points. Verstappen does the same. He gives bonus points. Leclerc gives the same. All four of these drivers are the same as it pertains to the percentage of beating their teammate. Then you want to compare this to the infographics tab of the Google spreadsheet. Hamilton, you can see how much he costs but notice how he's only about 12 points ahead of Verstappen over the course of the season. Gasly, he is considerably cheaper 
better than Leclerc, but his points do not seem to be half of that. So that's not worth it. Going over to the position comparison, like we were talking about, Hamilton and Verstappen at the top. Leclerc is third with his average position. He doesn't gain or lose positions on average. But if you go all the way over the Gasly, you can visualize how he is losing those five positions. And there's some other drivers that are way ahead of him as it pertains to how they are during the race. Then you can scroll over to seeing the teammate battles visualized. You can see an Afatari, Gasly is beating his teammate, Hamilton's beating his teammate, and Verstappen is beating his teammate, and Leclerc is beating his teammate. With that in mind, you could slowly point by point compare these drivers to each other and then make the decision for yourself. I made a really cool tab called Team Composition, where I took those two drivers, Verstappen and Leclerc, and put them on Team 1, and then I took Gasly and Hamilton, put them on Team 2, and then I put an algorithm in for the computer to figure out what is the best, on average, team composition for these two driver combinations. For team one, you would want to pair with Leclerc and Verstappen, Norris, Ocon, Mick Schumacher, and Red Bull. For team two, you would want to pair Hamilton and Gasly with Norris, Mick Schumacher, Sonoda, and Red Bull. Now on this chart, you have to recognize this is a max of a hundred million dollar budget. Some people are above that and you could put in your own calculations, but this is with a hundred million dollar budget cap. Every cell that's highlighted shows where one is better than the other. Team two is only better in two categories. First, it is more expensive by 0.6. So if the values went up, it could potentially increase. And then number two, it has a higher percentage and fastest lap because of Hamilton. But in every other category, team one is better than team two's composition as it pertains to points per million. The value is a huge difference. The points is over 50 points, but the average, if you're averaging 16 points more per race, that's going to add up over the course of the season. They have better qualifying averages, race averages, gaining positions, having better bonus points for the teammates. So this is where you can quickly see all the categories you would probably want to compare these drivers with and then see, is this driver the best that you want to have on your team? And this is what price point is all about. When you want to get a better driver or a better constructor, and you want to look at the hard data facts to see if they are indeed a better driver than the one you currently have. Maybe you want to see what the combination are between two drivers. You want to always keep in mind these statistical facts on your own. What is the cost so that you can make sure that you are under 100 million? But what is their points per million, their value, their average points for the season? Everything else you can compare, but those are the three foundational parts parts that you want to compare those drivers to. And when you compare the drivers, it'll help you make the best informed decision that you can for your team. And there you have it, a quick guide for price point and how you can use it for your Fantasy Formula One team. I'm Jay Jack, and until next time, I'll see you on the pit wall.